Hello everyone, welcome to another video tutorial. Today I'm gonna to be talking about Google Meet. Um, so many people are asking what is a good Zoom alternative? Um, what is a piece of software for free or for maybe inexpensive that we can come together and meet with video conferences for our business or for personal use, whatever it may be. If you go to meet.google.com, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, Google Meet is a video conferencing uh, software provided by, obviously, Google. Uh, very similar to Zoom, uh, very similar to their old Google Hangouts. Uh, just think of that. You can see here kind of what it looks like. Um, it's If you've ever used Zoom, which most of us have at this point, you will notice some very similar features. You can start a meeting or you can enter a meeting code. Now, there's something that Google just recently did. If you have a Google account and you use Gmail, which a lot of people do, if we go over to our Gmail account, as you can see here, down here in the left-hand side now on the sidebar, underneath kind of our uh, categories and our labels here in Gmail, you're going to see something that says meet and it says new because right now it's new. It may not be when you're watching this video, but you can actually start and join a meeting directly from your Gmail or email account. So if we go back over here, I'm gonna show you a basic rundown of everything that you can do within Google Meet. As with any of my videos, if you have any questions about how to use this piece of software, please let me know in a comment section below uh, with your specific question, and I or someone in the community will try to get back with you as soon as we possibly can. If you're looking for a great Zoom tutorial, I have one of those, and I will link that down below as well. So we can either start a meeting or we can enter a meeting code to join. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start a meeting. So if we go to start a meeting, you're going to see the similar things that you see uh, with any of these kind of conferencing software. Uh, allow Meet to use your camera and microphone. Uh, Google Meet needs access to your camera. Basically, you need to go up here and when this pop pop-up comes up here, you need to, to go ahead and select allow. This is going to allow it to basically use, as you can see here I am now, it will allow you to use the camera as well as the microphone, whatever you have selected as your default camera and microphone. Now, uh, within this screen here, we're going to be able to go and choose and we can either mute so we can turn the microphone off so people on the other end cannot hear uh, what we're saying or we can turn the camera off. So if I click this button here, the camera is off. Very, very easy. So go ahead and click that again and the camera turns back on. Now, if we click the three dots here in the lower right hand corner, this is where the settings are and this is where every everything, uh, you need to set up everything as far as the microphone as well as the camera. So if something isn't working right, just click on these three dots here in the lower right hand corner and then go to settings here, which is the gear icon. This is going to allow us to see kind of what the uh, the default kind of audio and video device is. If you're having a problem with your audio device, go ahead and, and select this down drop down menu here, and it will show you what the default microphone is. So for me, I have it set to my Scarlett uh, Solo USB. This is my audio interface. For you, it may be your webcam microphone, it may be a Blue Yeti, whatever it may be, select whatever you want your microphone to be. And if you see this here, as I'm talking, you will see these kind of three green lines going up or in and out, that's kind of letting you know there is some type of signal being gone through whatever you have your microphone as. Now the speakers here, under speakers, you can select this and wherever you want to hear the people that you're on the call with, these are your different speakers. I have a bunch of speakers, don't ask. Anyways, you can test those by go ahead and clicking or you know tapping the test button here and then go ahead and click or select done when you've kind of you know done with the audio there. Next, go to video. As you can see here, I'm using my webcam, the C922 from Logitech. Uh, and then basically the send and receive resolution. What does this mean? So when you're sending out a feed to people, do you want it to be high def, which is really not high def, right? But it's 720. So you can do high definition, which in their, in this case is 720. And then you can do uh, as well as receiving. So receiving is what you're going to be seeing. So depending on your internet connection, maybe you leave this at standard if your internet's kind of iffy, but if your internet is no problem, go ahead and, and go ahead and choose the high definition uh, option if that's something you want to do. Under general settings here, uh, there's nothing here, very bare bone, report additional diagnostics. Don't worry about any of that. Click done when you make sure your audio and your video source are selected to be exactly what you want them to be. Now, you can see in here and test everything here on this screen. You can see now I've started this meeting. It says the meeting is ready. Just like with other conference software, you're going to have a meeting ID. If we select and copy this here, we can just highlight meet.google.com slash and then your meeting ID. 
So if you want someone to join this meeting, you just select the ID, go ahead and right click and copy or command control C, copy that, and then send that via email, text, whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter if they're on mobile, desktop, tablet, it really doesn't matter. Um, and then once you've done that, you send that meeting ID to that person, whatever way you want to send it to them, and then they just click on that link and they join that meeting. So uh, I'm going to show you now what that looks like. So as you can see here, I just went to meet.google.com slash my meeting ID. And as you can see, I'm right here exactly where it needs to be. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and back over to the main screen. So that's how you send out, I guess you would say request for people to join your meeting. Now, what if you want to present something on screen? You want to show the people that you're in the meeting with uh, what's going on on your screen. So they have a present button here, very simple. The reason I like this, as opposed to some of the other options out there, is it's just simple, right? Like people who you're bringing onto these calls may not be very tech savvy. And so with that being said, you may need something that's very clean, very simple like this, and Google Meet kind of uh, you know adheres to that uh, standard. So if we go to present here and click present, it'll come up with a couple of different options. We're gonna see here that we can share our screen, we can do our entire screen, an application window, or just an individual Chrome tab. So we can go here and select all of the different Chrome tabs that we want to select. So if we go here and let's go ahead and select the YouTube tab in Chrome, and then go ahead and you can select or deselect share audio if you want them to hear what you're doing as well. Go ahead and click share which is the blue button there and then what's going to happen is you are going to start presenting to everyone okay so now they're going to be seeing that exact tab that you're doing so if we go back over here and we paste into uh, the meeting ID like I just said here we're going to see now that you know again I'm the person who is in charge of the meeting, so we're not seeing it now, I can see it on my other monitor, but that's how you share and present things. And you can see here at the top, sharing this specific Google Chrome tab. If you want to stop sharing, there's a nice blue button here where you go here and click stop, just like that, and that will stop sharing. It'll also highlight that application or Chrome tab to show you exactly what you're sharing, I guess, just in case you forgot. Now, what if we want to join a meeting? OK, we have a meeting ID and we want to join a meeting. I'm going to navigate over to my Gmail account now and show you how to do that. Again, it's going to be on the sidebar. You may need to refresh your email if it doesn't show up after a few minutes and then go to join a meeting. And then it says got a meeting code. And then we go to join a meeting, enter the meeting code. So basically, you don't want to if, if we go here and paste that exact meet.google.com, you don't want to do that. The meeting code are the the things that are separated by two different dashes. There'll be three characters dash. Some more characters, dash, more characters. So go ahead and remove the meet.google.com, just like you see that I'm doing here. And as you can see, go ahead and click join, and then it'll pop up a new kind of tab here within Chrome or whatever you're using, and then that meeting will come up. Now, it's not letting me join it at the moment because I'm actually the, the creator of that call. But you make sure you type in your meeting ID, and you're good to go. And then they will be a part, and they will join that meeting. That's how you do that. Hopefully this has been helpful. Again, I think this is a great alternative for those folks who are really tired of using Zoom or they're worried about the security uh, aspects of, of Zoom and other different features that maybe they, they think that it's a little too much convoluted for them. I think Google Meet kind of uh, is, is a really good alternative and a really good option for those people. Again, if you have any questions about how to use Google Meet, how to get access to Google Meet or any other fine I guess you would say details about this software, please put those in the comment section below. As always, it's really helpful if you like and share this video, helps it get out there for other people who need to learn how to use this software, or maybe who are looking for other alternatives for video conferencing at this time. Thank you guys as always for watching the video, subscribe if you want to, and I will talk to you guys in the next video.